This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals like Stalking Hitler's Generals, when Allied commandos launched daring wartime missions to kill or capture German generals, and Secret Societies, organizations that play a far larger role in our everyday lives than most of us realize from the Illuminati to Freemasons and Skull and Bones. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash Mark Felton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for our fans, use the promo code Mark Felton and you will save 25% off, which comes to only fourteen ninety nine a year. That's just $1.25 per month. For the very best in history programming, choose Curiosity Stream. During the 1950-53 Korean War, one of the participating UN militaries that fought alongside US forces issued iron crosses to its men for battlefield valor and distinguished service. That nation wasn't Germany, but Colombia, a country not readily associated with an Asian war, but one with an impressive combat record in Korea. Colombia ended up sending troops to Korea because of its relationship with the U.S. President Loriano Gomez, who was elected in 1950, was very keen on improving Colombia's relations with the U.S. The problem for Colombia was the perception in some quarters, including perhaps in the U.S. State Department, that the nation had been a bit pro-German or pro-Nazi before and during World War II. It was true that Colombia, like many South American nations, had a substantial German settler population. But the moment Japan attacked the U.S. Pacific Fleet Base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, on the 7th of December 1941, followed by Adolf Hitler's declaration of war on the United States on the 11th of December, Colombia had severed all diplomatic relations with the Axis. Though Colombia remained neutral in World War II, many of its merchant ships would fall prey to German U-boats, and the Colombian Navy did undertake some anti-U-boat operations in the Caribbean. Economically, Colombia was badly affected by the early stages of World War II, losing its European and Asian markets, which meant that it had to engage more closely with the US, which became its primary export market. The big fear throughout World War II was that German Colombians, who numbered about 4,000, might launch sabotage attacks on the US-controlled Panama Canal, which was quite close to Colombia. US threats over economic affairs forced the Colombian government to monitor, intern, or deport suspected Germans, Japanese, and Italians. Following the war, the new president, keen to foster stronger ties with America, volunteered a Colombian unit for service with the United Nations in Korea. So it was that Colombia would commit a force of 5,100 infantry, plus 300 sailors manning three frigates of the Colombian Navy. Colombia was not the only forgotten UN nation to dispatch troops to Korea. Apart from the US, Great Britain and the British Commonwealth countries of Australia, Canada, New Zealand and South Africa. Contingents of troops came from India, Turkey, the Philippines, Thailand, Ethiopia, Greece, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Italy and Luxembourg. Arriving in the southern Korean port of Busan on the 15th of June 1951, a battalion of Colombian infantry deployed alongside U.S. forces and saw plenty of action. The Colombians fought in Operation Thunderbolt on the Han River, the Battle of Old Baldy, a long drawn out series of fights in west central Korea, the Battle of Triangle Hill, and the capture of Kum Song in what is now North Korea. The Colombian battalion lost 20% of its men killed or wounded in action. Overall, Colombian casualties in the Korean War were 163 killed in action, 60 missing, 448 wounded, and 30 taken prisoner. The last Colombian troops would depart for home in 1954.
As with all nations, Colombia had a series of decorations and medals available to its armed forces, and in Korea, a new award was available, the Medal for Distinguished Service in International War, established on the 27th of March 1952. The first class of this two-class award will be rather familiar to students of World War I and II, the Iron Cross for Korea. Clearly modelled on the famous German decoration, it was the same size, a blackened iron cross pâté with a beaded edge. The centre of the obverse contains the coat of arms of Colombia, while on the reverse, the centre contains a Korean teguk with four triagrams and an inscription in Spanish. The medal, which resembled the German Iron Cross Second Class, was suspended from a white ribbon edged in yellow, blue and red, the latter the colours of the flag of Colombia. So why on earth did Colombia pick such a Germanic design, particularly considering the country's problems with German settlers and accusations of being pro-Nazi before and during World War II, and the fact that its troops were serving alongside US forces in Korea? Well, like many South American nations, Colombia had been heavily influenced by Germany. In 1907, Colombia hired German-trained Chilean military advisers to recast its army into a Prussian-style force. This influence is still seen today in the dress uniforms of some Colombian military units and schools, replete with the German Pickelhauber spiked helmets. The Iron Cross, being of Prussian design, harked back to the glory days of Colombia's military history and was adopted for the Korean War and not used again thereafter. But nevertheless, a strange thing to see on the battlefields of Korea, just a few years after World War II. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.